Howdy ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson and one of the goals in my math class is to create an environment where students feel open to share their ideas, whether they're sure or not, as well as open to ask questions of other people's ideas uh, without fear of looking like they don't understand or fear of looking dumb or anything like that. One of the challenges with that is kind of figuring out how do you begin to have students talking about math when they may seem a little bit reluctant? How do you get them to begin to start working together towards a common goal? How do you set those norms Norms up early on so that the conversations are a lot more fruitful and productive later in the year and it's not just the teacher explaining stuff but a lot of the talk time is actually the students talking about the math with each other and with the teacher and with the whole class. I've done a few activities to kind of help build that culture in my classroom but I recently found one called a hundred numbers to get students talking by another math teacher named Sarah Vanderwerf and it's been the most effective in getting the students to model themselves what math discussion should look like. So you put the students in groups of four everyone has to have a pencil and you're letting them know that we are going to explore what talking in math should look like. You show them the document for a brief moment that they'll be working on. It's just a page with the numbers 1 through 100 on there, but they're all out of order and all over the page. And their task is they're going to have three minutes to find the numbers 1 through 100 in order. But there's a few caveats. Each person in the group is numbered person 1, person 2, person 3, and person 4. The students are going to take turns finding the numbers in order. And the first person has to circle number 1, and the second person has to circle number 2, the third person number three, and the fourth person number four. It goes back to the first person for number five and so forth. They can help each other find it, but the appropriate person has to be the one that's actually circling the numbers. So I hand the pages out face down, and then when I start the timer, they can flip them over and begin. This is the first round. After the first round, I ask the students, how many numbers were you able to find? And I write it up on the board. And then I ask them, is there any way that we can actually keep track of who circles what? And this is where I did a little bit different than what Sarah did. I started them out with pencils. She originally starts them out with each student having a different color because eventually they're gonna start seeing a pattern on how these numbers are actually circled. But we do the pencil first and then they figure out, oh, well, if we all have a different color, we can actually see who's circling what. So, okay, everyone get a different color out and let's try round two. Before we start round two, I give them about a minute or two to develop a strategy on how they wanna approach round two. Look for the number that you're doing next instead of the number that's in the moment. Yeah, scan for the next number. And then I pass out a new sheet, it's the exact same sheet, but it's just blank, to each group and then once I hit start on the timer, they can actually flip it over and begin round two. Having a different color for each person helps them see that person one, all of their numbers are in the top left quadrant, person two is the top right quadrant, person three is the bottom right quadrant, and person four is the bottom left quadrant. And then that way they can know, oh, well, number five is coming up, and if all of my numbers are in this quadrant, my number five has to be in this little area. So usually about halfway through the round, some of them start to see that. Yeah, let's just, yeah. just look in your area. Tell them we figured it out. At the end of the second round, I asked them how far they were able to get to. I write it up on the board, and then I ask if they started to notice a pattern to keep it to themselves for the moment. And then we go into round three, where now most groups are able to actually start this round knowing what the pattern is and then getting the most numbers. So I pass out a new sheet for every group, then they flip it over. When I start the timer, they have three minutes. This is usually the round that they get the most. During all three rounds, I'm taking a few pictures of each group as they're working because after the three rounds, I share these pictures with them and then I show them and ask them, what does good group work look like? The simplest way that I found to do this logistically is if you have the Google Photos app on your phone, as you're taking pictures on your phone, just open up Google Photos. They'll automatically upload to your Google Photos account and then you can log into your Google Drive on the computer and then project them on the screen. So that way you don't have to really deal with texting them or emailing them to yourself. After round three, I invite some students to kind of share the pattern that they saw. We have a little bit of a discussion on how math is actually the study of patterns. I show them the photos without saying anything and then I passed out some post-its and I asked them to answer this question that I put up on the board. What does good group work in math look and sound like? I like the post-its because it's less intimidating than having a big sheet of paper. So they all write down their answers for that and then I pull up a Google Doc and then I ask, well, what are some of the things that you wrote? I type them down and then I do this in every single one of my classes. I compile a list of the themes that seem to be present in all the classes where they were talking about focus, where they were talking about everyone having a task and everyone having a job, where they were talking about working together towards a common goal, where they were talking about being huddled together, where they were talking about actually being on task. This wouldn't work if someone wasn't paying attention or was off and doing something else. So I have some students in my classroom economy whose job it is to 
create posters for the classroom. I print out these posters and I make that list of what does good group work look and sound like. And then I have my visual display artist create that poster, put the pictures on there, and then we put it up in class so we can remind ourselves throughout the year with the visual of themselves working, what good group work and discussion and math looks and sounds like. If you're curious about the classroom economy, I've got a playlist of how I've set up and organized that that I'll link right there. I'll link to Sarah Vanderwerf's blog post about this activity. And while in my class, I don't have a ton of tasks where they are assigned specific roles. A lot of my class is just students collaborating and working together to solve problems. And then we end up talking about them as a group. A lot of these principles, even though this was a more structured group activity, will translate over to just general working with one another in math class. Let me know if you have any questions about this or if you have any ideas on how to make it better. If you found this video interesting or helpful, consider subscribing. And if you're curious about what else I have on my channel besides math pedagogy, you can click right here on my channel trailer uh, to kind of see what else is here. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.